Good morning. Well, we begin uh, a new day and a new month with uh, devotion. If you've got a Bible, turn with me to Lamentations chapter 3. I'm going to uh, read a bit, talk, read a bit, talk, etc. through this middle sandwich of this incredible book, a book which I've got to say in my devotions I've found quite difficult to read. It's a book which in the Hebrew Bible is called the word Echal, which basically means how and it's written about the time of Jerusalem and how it's fallen apart under the oppression and the destruction by the Babylonians. It's almost how much has Jerusalem suffered in 58786 BC. And it's the, a book which is very carefully constructed. It's five poems, each chapter is a poem, and uh, you find these 22 verses in the first two and last two chapters. Each verse begins with one of the letters of the Hebrew alphabet. But the middle one has 66 verses, and each three verse section begins with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet, very carefully constructed. And as you read through it, you get to this middle section of, of the despair and you suddenly get this little ray of sunshine in the midst of the passage. It's almost like a field and I've been out for a walk this morning and you can see kind of some of the flowers just coming up. Some I saw some crocuses in, the, in, a, in a very empty field. The crocus, sing, like a single flower, pops up out of somewhere giving colour and light and delight. So you have these verses that we're going to look at in the middle of Lamentations, which shine out hope in the middle of despair. But just to help to set the mood, let me read verses 8, 16 to 18 of Lamentations 3. He has broken my teeth with gravel. He has trampled me in the dust. I have been deprived of peace. I've forgotten what prosperity is. So I say, my splendour is gone, and all that I hoped from the Lord. That gives you a little flavour of the lamentation here. We think it's possibly Jeremiah who's written it, but it's his sense of despair and sorrow and sadness. And it goes on in verse 19 to 21, and just note the end, how the hope comes through. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness, bitterness and gall. I remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. I wonder if you're feeling despair, no matter how bad our circumstance and situation. I don't think it really compares to the destruction of Jerusalem at this particular time, where literally everything that they relied on, their foundations have come apart. Well, perhaps we can relate to that feeling of despair and that our souls are downcast. Yet there's something which the writer calls to mind which brings him hope. There are things we need to bring to mind which give us hope. Well, it goes on in verse 22 to 25. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. In this brokenness of this despair, there's this suddenly displaced by this beautiful affirmation where this is turning around as this, this writer remembers the Lord. And his three Fs, there's a foundation of hope, there's a freshness to hope, there is a future hope. The foundation of hope, this is steadfast love of the Lord. There is this great love and a compassion which will never fail in verse 22. You know, they've relied on the bricks and the mortar and that's all come apart. Uh, uh, the wall between us and our neighbours has been coming apart for over 20 years since we moved into this house. And recently we ha it was rebuilt. When I look at it, I think, well, that might see me out. But you know what? It won't see every generation out. We know that the bricks, the mortar, the things that we sometimes think are solid come apart. So the city has been torn apart, a very foundational thing for the Jews. Yet there's a steadfast love of God which never, never fails. It's a compassion which can never come to an end. You know, our reliance is on the love of God found in Christ Jesus. It is a truly eternal 
and all the other things around us may fall apart. He never does. But it goes on to say they are new every morning. There's a freshness about our love of God. The great is his faithfulness. Now, you will be surrounded by people who may, will at times let us down, meaningfully or absent-mindedly. But God will never fail us. You know, we want freshness in our lives. And, you know, there's a freshness about his, our hope with him that every morning we can be reminded of that. Every morning, that foundation. It's like being woken up to fresh bread every morning. It's a fresh smell, a fresh aroma, fresh nutrition to our soul of the love of God, which never fails. And then it goes on. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. There is a future sense here. It says in verse 25, the Lord is good to those who, whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. My soul, it's almost like gives him a, giving himself a good talking to himself. Earlier on, he'd said, my soul is downcast within me. And sometimes we've just got to give ourselves a good talking to. I have to sometimes say to myself, reminding myself of the truth of who God is, the moments I feel down, when I feel despondent and weary, to remind myself that who God, his love, his faithfulness found in Christ, that surpasses all other things, that I can learn to be, rejoice when, when I have much or when I feel I have little. But you see, when God is our portion, he will never let us down. He and I are determined to wait on him. Therefore, I will hope or I will wait for and in Christ. When I compare this to the New Testament and Jesus and his journey, I think of the cross that we're looking for and anticipating as we come to, towards Easter at the beginning of April and the despair of the disciples. They couldn't understand it all. They felt despondent. I think of Peter being driven to a place where he denies Christ. Well, imagine the turning around that they had the turning around that Christ brings to them, but also to us. When they realize that the steadfast love of the God was worked out through the difficulties and that God had something bigger and better that he was doing through Christ's death and resurrection for them and for us. So there's something bigger and brighter which God is doing through the pandemic in and through us. There's a steadfast love of God that we can learn when everything else falls apart a foundation to rely on. There's a freshness that we can know every morning. It might feel like Groundhog Day, but we need to remind ourselves of that truth. But also we have a hope, more than a vaccine, more than coming out of the restrictions that we uh, struggle under, but a hope in Christ for today and tomorrow. And let us determine to wait on him and perhaps say to him today, you are my portion. I will wait. I will hope in you. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for the hope that you have given us in Christ. I pray that we would just gaze our eyes to you and know that we will look to you, knowing that you are our foundation, that your love is steadfast and sure, more solid than any rock, any foundation. I pray also, Lord, that we would be reminded of that, that it's fresh, it's new every morning. We can know that freshness of our love, relationship with you. But also we would wait, we would hope in you and know that for the future as well, I ask. Amen. God bless you. Keep looking to Jesus.